Hey folks, we built a tank last time, and while we built a pretty functional tank, uh, it has some room for improvements. So in this tutorial I will show you how to build on the tank tutorial I showed you last time, which goes through all of the basics and basically shows you how to improve this tank to be more tankish, because this is quick and evading and the armor is just so thin. Because in From the Depth, a tank that's only, I don't know, 9, 10, 11 something meters wide is a small tank. <laughs> and this is a small tank. But anyways, what was most shit with this tank was however the gun, or not actually the gun, rather the ammunition. I'm sorry, but the ammunition, the armor piercing high explosive I just threw on there, uh, I did some testings with it later and it turns out it, it's horrible. Uh, yeah, it's just straight out horrible, it does nothing good. Um, so I'm going to show you some shells that are much more efficient, like Hesh, like I mentioned in the video, but I'm going to show you like the differences uh, of Hesh and like uh, all of it. So yeah, let's go through it. And they also updated some stuff, which, um, you know, the UI. All right, so we're going to begin with testing the original shells. I tried to set it up a little bit there. Uh, so gunpowder and armor piercing high explosive. Now I built a little test target. Here we can see this target and we're going to load it as to win guard. So it will be easier to aim at it. And then I'm going to switch before it shoots it asunder. All right. Here we can see we fired the high explosive uh, uh, arm piercing high explosive and this heavy armor and it's completely stopped. All right. Let's try out this double metal armor. Doesn't penetrate. You can see here. And it doesn't destroy. All right. So how about the single layer of stone? It actually destroys a single layer of stone and barely damages the box behind. How about um, alloy? We can see there, come on, there we go. Stopped by alloy, whelp. Small damage behind, but not much. Uh, and then we have, uh, here we can have uh, era. It gets completely stopped and doesn't even destroy the eras around it. And by applic panels, okay, now it blew some stuff up there, but it's getting stopped. Will it be stopped by a single layer of metal? No, it can't even. So as you can imagine, this shell is pretty shitty. All right, so what do we have for options? Well, um, now I'm on the wrong piece here. Okay, let's go down here and we can go here. So I made this a little bit bigger actually because last time it was too big, but uh, you can see uh, they need to be under two meters to fit. So I drag one of the propellants like down to the minimum and then I draw the second down so that the shell is kind of uh, um, 999, 90, yeah. It's in the 90s and now we can fit this thing because the gunpowder casing is lower. So anyways, um, you can of course have armor piercing one. So if we have an armor piercing head, you can see what stats it does, speed modifier. And in behind it we can instead have a solid warhead body like this. And it will be uh, better than the thing we have now. Uh, so then we can just go to APS and clear the clips and I'm going to aim it so we can try and fire it here. And let's see here. It feels like it jumps over there. Well, let's shoot the stone instead then. Well, it, it destroys the stone blocks, at least. And let's try and the metal, it's kind of, uh, it penetrates like it shoots through the metal at least. So you can see that this shell is at least better. 
<laughs> than the one we made because it actually kind of you know destroys block on impact and now it's super slow okay destroyed stuff but anyways um sabot head is pretty nice too but one thing that you can do here uh, is that to destroy blocks some people used kind of a, like let's see here a hollow point uh, did it converts it to kinetic and we'll can add another solid warhead body and see there so it will be real heavy and stuff and you can see the speed of this shell is uh, oh it's not actually that slow interesting you see no it goes into the wrong thing here APS ammo okay that sounds good and shell plus casing it seems that we need to... Oh, right, the propellant was uh, removed, so there we go, now we can fit it. I'm just wanting to clear this one. Clear the clips and go this. And okay, it's a little bit damaged, but let's see if we can kinetic crush this thing when we have reloaded. Okay, it was a little bit too large for some reason. Let's try again now. Oh, can we take a healthy half, uh, half quarter thing? It seems that if we'll aim properly, not really, but we can take it in two shots probably. So that's progress. Okay, now it's not very accurate. Let's shoot on this metal here. Yeah. So the hollow point thing uh, is basically nice to kind of strip off uh, surface armor like this. And as you can see, we completely like constantly repair this um, like area all along. And here we can see, wow, this kinetic shot shot, uh, shot off a good part of those stones. And uh, let's see on the alley here. Yep, shoots off an ally like this, and let's just try some on the applic panels there. Yep, does some damage. Can we have another hit? Oh, beautiful. So this does no penetration, and this is, you know, it's, it's a shot that works, but it's not like the best. Uh, and instead, um, I would recommend you to even do the hash, which I talked a little bit about before. We can do high explosive, let's have two high explosives, like one or two high explosives behind. You can see it's pretty slow now, but, uh, well, whatever. Okay, and we're just going to, I don't know, clear the clips so that we can go there. So, uh, high explosive squash head, no, uh, yeah, hash. Uh, it basically uses our own armor against us. You can see damaged block behind there. So let's target this here. And when we shoot through, you can see in the next shot here, you can see it spawns fragments behind it because what it basically does is create a explosion at the surface of the armor and then just spewing all this stuff to uh, like the armor itself to behind it. So you can see here when we shoot the stone, we of course do some like good deal of damage like with there, but if we shoot this one, the heavy armor here, the fragments should be real dangerous and even uh, like damage the heavy armor behind it even a little bit. You know? So um, that's basically what Hash does, uses uh, its own armor against it and it's much more efficient that like this. This is what I normally would do, so I have no idea why I put, put you through that armor-piercing high explosive. Um, and, well, what we also can do is create a heat shell, which is a shaped charge. And on the shaped charge, we can... Uh, yeah. We can set up a lot of stuff here, basically. And let's just make sure the shell fits. Very nice. And this is kind of a factor, so maybe we want to have one of them kind of half, so we'll have a little bit of boom explosion as well. Probably a good idea. And this one, it does a similar thing. Um, 
but not really. It's uh, now I'm of course talking like more IRL, <clears throat> but uh, the difference is it doesn't use the armor itself against it. <clears throat> no, uh, what this is doing is using like um, the explosion in the shell gets sent out as a kind of jet thing in front of it and it's like it becomes like mo molten shot that's kind of forms some kind of molten metal jet uh, and uh, the way it's portrayed in this game is that it spawns fragments so if we shoot here for example you can see that it just got through here like it basically ejected a small piece a little tiny jet inside of it straight inside of it we can see we even damaged the applique panels behind there and if we shoot at this the stone we can get some damage behind like that and of course if we shoot on the heavy armor slopes we get damaged shots behind so if I understand things like correctly is that this creates a little hole and sends fragments through the armor and uh, this squash head high explosive like hash um, um, yeah the hash basically in a high explosive squash head it basically uses the armor as fragments it doesn't create a hole it just you know just spawns fragments from behind the armor and if you never heard about sh uh, hash or stuff in real life it's because they um, I think they kind of stopped using it during or after World War II or something like that but whatever I think that the heat one is actually the most efficient one so this is like the first part we've gone through the uh, types of shell and you can see that this type of shell we got up there is just much more efficient and uh, yeah, let's see her barrel for full propellant burn for me 4.3 meters and this is a little yeah it might be enough but anyways next we're going to overhaul the tank itself with armor and shit and everything because the armor is not very good all right so to proceed with our little tank here we'll need to strip off all the armor like uh, this basically uh, so we have some armor inside of here and uh, we're just going to strip all this armor off because well we'll need to do this uh, with a lot uh, stronger materials and we need to do it a lot more bulky like firstly we actually need to upgrade the base plate so um, yeah we'll just begin with strip it all right so one thing i noticed here that some of the wheels don't really behave as they should Maybe I misclicked and clicked drive wheel instead on some of them, but go through all of them and check tank wheel on these wheels instead. So you can see that all of them are moving as they should. Right, so what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to exchange some of the base plate and some of the like turret case with advanced armor or heavy armor I mean uh, because um, basically the underside of this tank was a uh, real like survivability liability and uh, we'll need to prolong this life a little bit and we're going to do it with some trusty good old heavy armor instead of course this will increase the cost a lot of this vehicle but the turret for this vehicle was already kind of expensive so it wasn't really worth it to save on materials for the internal important armor like this and a little tip on how to do this well basically we can click R to select a block here and then we know that these are four beams so what we do to exchange this is go to heavy armor four beam control click so we hold control while we left the right click and this will replace the block with heavy armor a little tip there all right and here we can see we made a little kind of base plate of heavy armor there we also made sure that the wheels rest on heavy armor beams like this which hopefully will improve the survivability a lot especially this little case for the important stuff 
And speaking about important stuff, you know I talked a little bit about the ammo not being the best here. Well, what we're going to do is connect this one up here. Come on, be connected. And we're going to go and we are going to set up a heat shell. So, um, here we go. Let's see a heat and a high explosive and a high explosive. That's probably enough. And we can then decrease the propellants a little bit so that we can have a shell, a shell that should fit in it. Perfect. That should work. Right, so we had a little bit of material shortage problem with the old one. So I added some more material boxes. And in the last tutorial, I completely forgot this little important detail. Well, it didn't repair itself. Because I just completely forgot to put down some of these uh, repair bots. Wherever they are now. Um, okay, they are, are they at AI? No, they are, dec they're not decoration, they're miscellaneous, right? Here, repair bots. So for a little tank like this, like, we would probably want to have, you know, a couple of repair bots at least. So let's have, let's have a few. Let's have like, at least three of them we should have. Let's have like six of them and we should be set. Beautiful. And now I want to do a little special like backup thing. Yes, we're going to put in a couple of batteries um, and engines, of course. So let us uh, let us do something like this, maybe like that. And we can have like a little battery there, a little battery there, and we'll just have some fuel engines here. No, I mean some electric engine here and some electric engine. How does it work? Like that, how beautiful. It doesn't matter. But uh, these will basically, you know, charge, which is nice. So let's fill this thing up. Uh, and when we do like this, we should probably go into this engine here and make sure that the battery charge fraction is probably, you know, kind of 20%, something like that. Uh, and this is just so that if when the engine is destroyed, we should be able to have fuel or uh, energy or uh, p engine power for a little while. Um, so... Um, yeah, so, so that we still have engine power and that might give us some time to repair it. So we have some backup engine power there that should be pretty safe inside there. And uh, two of them as well, if one of them would happen to get destroyed. So I added some pieces here and there and we are going to bulk this thing a little bit. Um, make it a, a good bit bigger because this was definitely too small. Yes, uh, and since we are in here as well, we should also, uh, yeah, so that basically uh, you can see that we have a little like issue here. We have some materials and stuff here. And of course, this is like less important than the AI. The AI is real sensitive. So we want to be a little bit careful with the AI. We're going to go and um, have like a little extra layer of these applic panels over the AI and over that we are going to put heavy armor. Uh, now it's kind of unlikely that anything uh, heavy armor wise, I think everything that comes here should basically bounce off but you'll never know. Uh, so you know we can't make it large, like higher than this because if we do then uh, we'll have some problems. But this is basically kind of the shape here. One thing I think we want to set up though is we go to the AI mainframe here. And you can see it's set up as a tank broadside. Uh, what we can do is uh, we can do, we can set up the point at instead. 
when we have a little bit more you know tank feeling uh, it will be considerably heavy so it might be a little bit slower we can instead uh, be like set it to point at it will maintain distance and point at the enemy so here we can see uh, combat distance thousand meters probably dragged down a little bit so we'll actually hit I don't know uh, but that is yeah uh, and we can also check it to not retreat if the enemy is a little bit you know if it's too close so that's something we can do and it will behave more tank ish uh, right and then we go and we'll set it to still be a ship or tank fantastic it's probably very fine so now it will be a little bit more tank like but um, I'm going to armor the turret because we want it uh, the turret to be a little bit more heavy armor and I'm also going to start bulk up this area but one thing I wanted to show you here we can see I actually got this little tip I completely forgot it but I got it in comments here so here we have the, like the exhausts and while we can have like hull exhausts all the way out to kind of give it some armor an even better thing is to just go to, 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 to go to air, go to air ducts, go to heavy armor duct, and here we have the it can th flow out of this heavy armor duct. And then we can even prolong it with like a metal duct going on there. I don't know, and maybe we'll have some hole or whatever there. We'll see how long it will be out, but then we can kind of keep it much more protected. Beautiful. All right, so designing the armor a little bit here on the um, turret. You can see that I've moved around a lot of pieces and we'll have some secondary detection uh, at another place later. But we have a little camera uh, tracker or a camera tracker and the normal camera. And then we also have the coincidence range finder, but we upgraded to the nine meter variant. You can kind of see I've uh, you know moved uh, <laughs> a lot of things here and we have a tube of three meters of metal here in front of the camera so the thing is that uh, we'll cover this up and then we'll add another layer on top of this and I'll see if <laughs> this little camera that sticks up a little bit will actually be able to see the enemy through this we'll, we'll notice it when testing it will be pretty interesting but on the outer side, I intend to have like normal metal uh, in, but not in the front. But uh, you'll see, I just wanted to show you the internal parts there. The other armor on the craft, you can see we have kind of double metal all around it here, so much heavier. Uh, we of course have the heavy armor on top here, as you can see. And we have a lot of these applique panels inside. Because instead of using wood as this ball liner to kind of make the wooden fragments less dangerous, um, we instead opt to have an internal little layer of uh, this beautiful applique panels that will catch the fragments. Because probably those uh, wood fragments wouldn't have been very dangerous, but they still might have destroyed some important stuff. So um, this is why we did it like this instead. And we might indeed put some... Uh, armor uh, like wood inside of this one as well but that's only if we fit it instead of for applique panels one thing too is that to protect the wheels a little bit we're actually going to add a little block um, like this you can see inside there we have the wheel and to protect the wheel we can simply put a two meter one like this and it will be a little close to the ground but well this should protect them very much from explosions uh, and the like and uh, well we'll of course put some um, rubber at the bottom of this thing to kind of uh, smooth it out a little bit um, so it won't collide as much yeah well that's basically that but i'll be back very soon with uh, the next part uh, what we're doing here 
All right, so we continued with our whole little. <laughs> you can see I've kind of shaped out this area here. We have a pretty big like parts inside, which is absolutely fine. Uh, we can actually add some wood where we won't have anything. And we have big spaces on the sides here. So since I've changed the AI to point at the enemy, we are going to add two auxiliary cannons. Yes, we are going to put in two smaller like cram cannons uh, to this vehicle so that we'll have some, you know, auxiliary crams basically to uh, keep up with a little firepower. So instead of machine gun, we have have crams. We might add the machine gun on top of the turret somewhere uh, as well, but well, we'll see. But let us uh, build a couple of cramps. Now it's pretty straightforward, so we'll just, uh, yeah. All right, so I have added a lot of stuff here. Um, I made this uh, barrel longer, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it's to make it more accurate. Uh, and what you probably can see here is that I included 30 millimeter assault cannons inside this little turret here. Um, I thought it looked pretty good. And I've added a little cram cannon. It's actually pretty big. You can see inside of here that it covers a pretty big area. We can dive inside a little bit here. You can see it extends on both sides. Here and there. Uh, and then I've added this uh, auxiliary little uh, medium missile system here. And I just set it up to fire in all angles, have a, a friend or foe uh, thing. And you can see here, if we go in here into the control block, missile controller, uh, 180 is where it's you know firing we have one turn we have thrusters they're pretty slow uh, we'll see how it works it's a pretty slow missile to be honest it's not very big it's just a little auxiliary and then we have some uh, ai here uh, i've moved out some of this detection uh, general processing here on the side uh, and we have a little radar and a little laser tracker there because there is one thing I wanted to add to the main AI and that is actually a card slot because we want a aim point selection and a target prior prioritization cards. Um, yeah, like this. We can set them up as we like, but uh, yeah, this will improve it a little bit. Um, and we should <laughs> try to target blocks above water <laughs> because uh, if we find anything in the water we probably don't have the gun to shoot at it. Yeah, well that's probably that. And uh, you can see we have some free space uh, inside these walls here and what we're going to do to fill this up with you know something is we're gonna go with wood and we're gonna go with the biggest pole we can fit and we're just gonna have a couple of poles like this to catch um, some of the explosiveness of potential stuff that might leak in here and of course on the other side we have a lot of expensive AI detection so we're going to, uh, we're actually going to go here. We're going to set up some applique panels to have a little extra defense of this part here. Now let's see how far it goes back, kind of like that. Kind of like, yeah, let's... This is not wasted materials. Because this is a little bit expensive. There we go. We can probably have a little applique panel thing on top here as well. Fantastic. And then we can add some wood pillars here as well. 
All right, fit very many. Beautiful. So that's probably something. I think that this tank will be much more efficient now. Let's see if I forgot to mention anything. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, but at least we're going to take this for a little test here. You can see we have problems turning. We're super slow. We're a much heavier tank now. A much, much heavier tank. You can see if we take this thing, lift it up and drop it down again. I added some rubber and a little bit of a plick panels there to deflect a few shots. Um, if I didn't mention that. You can see, dunk. But, uh, you know, it's it's hovering and all. But if you are having a little trouble with turning, you go to the wheel here. And you go to wheel configuration. And when you go to side friction, and we can make it a little lower. And the forward friction a little higher. Um, something like that. And copy to all wheels. Now I can try and turn we can see that the turning is now quicker beautiful uh, since we're so heavy now we're kind of slow but one thing I completely forgot to do is to save this thing so let's save the tutorial tank upgraded because it's upgraded like that and um, yeah well is there anything I have forgot? I don't think so. Um, we tested the... Yeah. We, we tested the can a little bit before. Uh, we should probably remove these ones. We don't need them. And save it and... Whoops. Let's go in here and let's load our target. On an enemy team. Here we have the target. So let's see what it does to the target. Well, we are shooting on it. Our machine guns are going off there. Oh, well, that's nice. Now it's, I think we might have the old show, old shells loaded. Since we haven't, you know, loaded this in and out, we probably don't have the uh, new shells, which are hash. No, heat. The old ones are, are more piercing, high explosive. Well, uh, the missiles do hit sometimes, that's good. That means they are doing something. Nice. Well, it seems like the uh, cannon is pretty accurate. Of course, the uh, machine guns doesn't reach too far, but we seem to be real accurate with this cannon here. Let's check if see if um, this one is tracking. It is tracking a target, so it means we can actually protect it this much. That's great. Awesome. Very nice, very nice. But, oh no. Did we get stuck or something? I think we did. Wow. We'll, we'll need to work a little bit on maneuverability, that's for sure. Alright, so we are now in the ashes of the Empire instead. Because I thought that we just want to test this out a little bit against some real enemies because in the land designer you can spawn enemies why well, it's better to go to the ashes of the empire and spawn some stuff so uh, let's let's spawn a couple of tanks there and see what it does we might need to tweak this ai a little bit it's supposed to maintain the distance and fire because we haven't tested our cram cannon yet of course since uh, well, probably needs more distance. Well, it's interesting. We can see how it takes shots from behind a little bit like this. We can see that blocks have gotten teared off. 
what does it do to this one though? Oh well. Some goods, good parts are indeed missing. I want to see the cannon do some action though. But the no, indeed, it is not. Oh no, now I'm. Oh god, I'm lost. <laughs> Did it get disappeared? All right, now let's see if we can get some cram action. Now we're at least far away from the enemy, a little bit too far. It's faster than I would expect it to be. Because if I'm setting up this one, you know, if we go in here, point at and maintain distance. Okay, now let's see, we actually close in here. We fired our cram. It should be able to fire every uh, 14 seconds. God, that's a big missile. Cool. Our old tank wouldn't have survived that at all. If we just freeze it here, we can take a little look. We can't take much of a look, but you can see it tore out the front here, but not more than that. And the sides of this one, well, doesn't matter too much. Uh, so uh, maybe we should go to the Steel Empire and to spawn uh, was it Goliath that we had problem with last time? Can't remember. Well, let's spawn a Goliath. It was not the Goliath. This is huge. Holy shit. Man. Yeah, well, well we can't... Damn, we won't be able to take this. Oh, it don't even spawn vehicles. Yeah, well. This will be uh, formidable armor testing, at least. Oh. <laughs> wow just bombards us with missiles amazing let's just pause this and see yeah we are not in very working condition half our barrel is gone the detection is capped missiles are online but man this is this is not a tank I wanted to spawn to be quite honest Uh, this this just eats us but anyways if we go to this one we can see we can set some stuff here maximum pitch to target um, yeah it doesn't matter too much but the combat distance we can kind of take it down a little bit if we want to have you know a little bit better and here like we can tweak this to make it like ideal pitch angles should be we don't use pitch controls though so it doesn't matter no like disable pitch above azimuth yeah there is a lot about the pitch but i would actually want some more uh, azimuth limitations uh, since that is what we use Oh lord, now you can see our compartmentalized structure here, that... Yeah, now we're actually living off of our batteries that we made before, you remember? That we makes us go forward. We should be absolutely dead, and we don't have any weapon systems online currently. But wow, we really increased the survivability of this tank. So, if we just destroy all vehicles... And we can load our upgraded tank. You can see it here. And then we can load our old tutorial tank. Oh. God damn it. As another faction. Thank you. So let's just load a couple of them. 
to make the point that we actually improved it. Now one of them is at our team, so I think we're going to just turn this off and it will just sit there, be sad. While our upgraded tank is going to do some interesting stuff with our old tank, which will be highly interesting. All right. I think we'll just go into our upgraded tank and we're going to take the no behaviors, point at, combat distance. Let's just have the combat distance a lot lower. Yes, make it go closer to them. And, oh no, not to collide. Because the interesting thing here is that when we shoot at this tank, we should be able to um, spawn fragments inside of it, because that was the problem with our old armor. Now time slowed down, interesting. Like having an auxiliary missile system is always super great, even though... Um, one, I think of it, small missiles probably would have been a better idea. Oh no. Um, also, one thing we did set up was don't retreat when you're too close. And that's maybe one thing that uh, should keep it from running away like this, but obviously it didn't do so so far. Well, now it's backing towards the enemy. While it obviously can turn. Oh god. That's not good. That's not good. Um, yeah. Oh no, it's turning its back. Okay, come on. Jump around there. Okay, let's not allow reverse. Uh, I didn't know you'd still had to do that. I thought it was old news, but you will may have to... Uh, oh no. Disabled reverse? It might help. Okay. It, yeah, whatever. It may or may not. It may, it may help you with aiming in the right direction, but it may also not. Is that a hit? Wow. It kind of was pretty accurate. So let's see here if we just get can slow the time down a little bit. And I think I'll need to Nope. Okay. Now, there we go. I had to switch <laughs> between different types of keyboards. All right, so let's see here. It's just shooting those. Speed up the time a little bit. No. So this is the type of tweaking you have to do all the time. And uh, I theoretically thought that the point at AI solution would have been better. Um, but I think the heat one is good though. But I'm not totally sure that this is the case. Now I don't know where the tank I was just on went, but whatever. We can just go and click C and this one is the most heavy. And we can scrap this behavior and say um, we can just circle the enemy at a given distance as well, of course. Combat distance, 600 meters. But I think this is actually not the thing we want, because we have a front side cannon as well. So, um, let's try and set it up as a U-turn. Yeah, that will be interesting. 
how will it do if we set it up to do a U-turn thing? It's pretty interesting. Now let's see here. I think this was the one and now I completely flew away at the wrong direction again. It's not that one. Right, this is the one. Will we do some kind of attack run? All right, I'll let those there. And then we go for an attack run, interesting. Of course, this is actually, I didn't tweak it. I just set it up as a nice um, thing that AI uh, usually wants to do for aircrafts, you know what? Sometimes a bombing run or something like that works super great for tanks. Well, in any case, uh, we can tweak to infinity, but I'm pretty sure you can see that uh, our upgrades have indeed increased the survivability very much. Uh, let's set up this as the old broadside 2.0. I think this was what we had there. So um, when we go broadside, we approach them in an angle, which will set up our cram to actually do something more often which would be helpful oh yes bam big boom we have a lot of heavy armor on our uh, upgraded tank and it's uh, much more expensive of course uh, but uh, not only that, the uh, heavy armor absorbs m m most of the like EMP, so it could be a, a good idea to have some uh, surge protectors at the sides of the inner tank, um, but it's not as necessary now that we have heavy armor, but it's still a good idea, because heavy armor is expensive and it takes damage from EMP. Like the 30 millimeter cannon, I'm not sure how much they actually do, but they do look cool. Now, did this do any significant damage, or do I need to, like, change? It's very easy to change the cram cannons now. Um, I think you'll probably know how you do it, but, well. It just is a big boom on top. Huh, interesting. I can make it load slower. It will make it much more powerful. But, uh, yeah, there is hundreds and thousands of ways to set up cramps and stuff like that. But anyways, um, what can I say? I, ho I hope that this like little tutorial helped you. And of course, you can just go in here. There's like, you can set up camouflage for the heavy armor as well, of course. Like, we could have, whoops, Camel Desert 1 on this one. I don't know where we even are. I think here we are. We we'll just need to pause the game so you can see the beautiful cam we just set up. But that's how to do it. Of course, you probably know that. Whoops. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't have much more to like add. Set up the AI according to what works best. Um, point at would probably be better for this one if we just tweak it to work properly. Uh, but broadside works better for this one for some reason. I don't know if it's if we have multiple targets or yeah. And if you want to go faster, just use larger wheels, because the small wheels are quite limited in uh, how good they are. So, in any case, hope you did enjoy this little video, and this is your host, Jim Anism, signing out.